And this is my smallest ever engine I ever had here on the dynamometer, a 241 cubic inch, and it happens to be a Hemi. And here we have it, 1954 Dodge Royale pace car convertible with a 241 Hemi, which is from the factory rated at 150 horsepower. Of course, it took us a while to get this engine on the dynamometer. It took us a while to find some pieces. We got a few pieces here and there, and I've also got a few pieces from uh, Nulling, and we finally put it together. And of course, this is not an engine that's very easy to be installed on the dynamometer. We had to do a lot of fabrications. For example, like for the motor mounts, they have no ears on the side of the block to attach my motor mounts like any typical V8. But so we made a brace or a bridge, what you call it, which is underneath the water pump. My friend Dan was in the shop the other night and I told him that uh, I wanted to fabricate something to uh, put this engine on the dynamometer because from the factory there's a bridge like so. It's a funny looking piece, which I don't have. So I told Dan if we can make something so I could put it on the dynamometer so I could do some testing on this 241 Red Ram Hemi. So anyways, he stayed here one night with me. We got a few pieces of metal. Of course, we fabricated it, and here it is. We've got it done, and finally we got it on the uh, stand on the uh, dynamometer. And then another complication, uh, we were very lucky. The bell housing from the uh, 340L A engine, or the small block A engine and Mopar, which is right here, bolts right up to the housing on the uh, block on the uh, 241 Hemi. So I was lucky with that, but the only problem is, the, these engines only come with an automatic transmission from what I know. So then we had an issue with uh, getting a flywheel with this bell housing. But then again, the flywheel that comes with this engine is so big, it doesn't fit inside this bell housing. So I noticed that the crankshaft on this motor was an eight bolt crank. And then I needed a smaller flywheel, like 130 tooth. So luckily I tried the Hemi flywheel, which I have in my dynamometer for testing Hemis, which is a small flywheel, 130 tooth, which lined up with the eight bolts on the crank which I had bolted in right here in this motor. And it worked fine. And then again, we had the issue with the starter and the teeth lining up with the flywheel. So we had to space the block. And after that, we got it perfectly lined up. We had to space out the starter, like so. Then we added a few washes here, like so, right here. Then we had to fabricate the brackets. And then, of course, this is what comes with the uh, car for the flywheel. It's actually a torque converter. I sliced up the torque converter that went, we had a spare one, but then again, I had to center the holes to go on my friction plate for the dynamometer. Then we took apart, of course, the torque converter to line it up. Then I said, you know what? This is not working because this is too big. It's hitting my bell housing for the LA340 uh, engine uh, bell housing, and it didn't work. So then I said, you know what? Let me try something else. And this is where I thought of putting the Hemi flywheel, which I, I noticed the eight studs was exactly like a Hemi. So we got that on, and of course, there's no threaded flywheel, we put bolts and nuts. So we got that. So I went to a bolt shop, which I got from, uh, uh, from a place down the street here, and uh, we got it done. So that was another case. And then uh, I had this distributor. Here's this distributor. I looked at it, I go, you know what, this is a mess, you know? I know it runs on points, okay? So I said, you know what, I'm not gonna sit here, try to fix this up. And I noticed you also wanted to buy a Petronix kit but I thought of something else. I took a look at a 340 electronic distributor, which is right here. This is exactly what I got here. 72, 73, 340 electronic distributor. Of course, I came from a 340 engine. And look at that. It bolted right on, perfect. So, once we got the flywheel set up, 
Once we got the bracket to hold up the engine, once we got the distributor going, then of course we have the wiring. This is what comes on a 241 Hemi. Ceramic or whatever this is, I don't know. I couldn't find a set of wires at the moment when I put the engine on the dynamometer. So what I did is I took a set of wires from a 426 Hemi and as you can see, I installed them just like a Hemi, 426, and it did the job. There's a little bit of a loose fit here, but it doesn't matter. It still snaps into the spark plug, and that's what counts. And then as I was putting this engine together, I installed the valve covers the other day. I took uh, some red paint with a brush, and I sat here one night, and I started painting the, uh, the letters, uh, Red Ram and Dodge on the valve covers to give it a little bit more better look, because that's the way it came from the factory. So I, I sat there with a little brush, I did some touch up just to give it a better look and here it is. I know I couldn't find a stencil kit on the market that I could stick on or find a way to do it. So I did the best I can with what I had. The valve covers are so pitted and rusted you couldn't even read the name in some cases. Of course some of the parts is almost flat but I try to copy which this is a better valve cover on the other side. So I copy this one to be uh, of course like twins. I've done it and, uh, and this is the results. But you know what, putting this engine on the dynamometer was something, you know, playing with flywheels, playing with the support. And of course, uh, this was an uh, issue too. But I finally figured it out. This distributor, I went to a 340 distributor. Now, of course, this is the housing that comes for the thermostat straight up, which I don't use. I use the one I use from the dynamometer all the time, which is a 90 degree angle. This is factory straight up. And that's the thermostat housing I use for the dynamometer. But that's not, uh, that was not an issue. My most concern was setting it up. And here's the carburetor with an Avonhauser intake manifold. And this is from the factory, I believe is a 150 or 160 horsepower engine. It's not modified in any way. It's been rebuilt to stock specifications. And the only thing it had was a 30 overbore. And then the other part is the exhaust system. Of course, we don't have headers for a 241 Hemi. I use the original exhaust manifolds. As we all know, there's nothing special about these exhaust manifolds. All I know is the way they are designed, they make no power whatsoever. Check it out. Such a small little tube. And if you look at the other side, it's even worse. Look at that simple, awful design exhaust manifold. Don't expect this thing to make power with these manifolds. As you can see, the exhaust is coming out of here and then the exhaust is coming out of here. Of course, it's gonna lose power. All they do is smash each other and try to exit right down the pipe. For, for, for a good, good exhaust manifold, you need individual tubing like headers or a high-performance manifold. But then again, back in 1954, this is the manifold that came with the engine, very poor design, but of course, we got it to put it back on the engine so I could get it running on the dynamometer. So we could check the engine, how it goes, break in the cam that we got. Of course, I check the oil pressure, check for leaks, check for noises, and of course, uh, see if there's any vibrations. What, what surprised me, of course, these engines also came with a two barrel. Then they had an upgrade as a dealer, uh, I believe a dealer installation with an Offenhauser intake four barrel setup with a Hemi head. Of course, maybe that more compression ratio, but these were actually rated seven point something compression ratio. But you know what? They never thought of doing the exhaust as a performance. I don't know, but they never changed it. But this is an awful design. But then again, back in 54, who thought of that, right? And then I had another issue yesterday because I, uh, when I had the engine running, I said, let me check if I got oil on the lockers because these are non-adjustable lockers and they were very, very uh, uh, gummy, uh, dirty. So I took out the valve cover yesterday. We ran the engine without the uh, valve cover and I noticed very, very, very small drops of oil coming through the lockers. So Vasily and I, we took off all the shafts, we dismantled everything and we had to blow air and the cleaner in every little locker, right through every little pinhole which took us time to clean the shafts inside out so I could get more oil fed through the push rods in the rocker assembly. And after that was done, we put it all back, then we made a run just for a few seconds and we finally seen the oil splashing out everywhere like it should. So we put the valve cover back on, then we did a few tests and uh, then we took it from there. This is a unique oil filter, it's a cartridge type. Back in the 50s, most engines had cartridges, they didn't have a spin on oil filters. So I figured, you know, I'm gonna put the oil filter adapter on, put a new cartridge, bolt it in. And I figured, you know, it must have an oil leak for sure. You know, everything's old on this engine. But surprisingly, I, uh, I have no leaks whatsoever. So everything went well. And of course, I had to prime the engine before I installed this on the dynamometer. 
and I need, it didn't have the same oil pumps like the new modern LA 340 engine. So I had to make my own shaft so I could prime the engine. And of course, let me show you. All the Mopar engines, small block, big block, I primed them with this tool right here, which is a hexagon shaft. I put on an electric drill and I put it through the oil pump and this is how they're designed when I uh, prime the engine. But in this case, it's a different oil pump. It's more like a Chevy style, which has a slot like this. So I, got my, I went up and got myself a shaft. I put a slot in it. I put it down there into the uh, oil pump through the distributor hole and I had it primed before I installed it. And then when I got 70 PSI oil pressure, Right on the engine stand, I said to myself, you know what? We are ready to get this running on the dyno. And uh, we got it running. And of course, someone had the carburetor rebuilt for us. And of course, we had an issue with the uh, float that the fuel was just pouring in into the engine because the uh, float was stuck open. So then we took apart the uh, top of the carburetor, which uh, Vasily did last night, and we fixed that also. And of course, my customer also brought in the Alvenhauser 4 barrel intake that we started with because that's what he wanted to run the engine with in the first place. And we built the engine with everything that he's brought in. Bottom line, it was, this was a challenge because I've never done an old Hemi on a dynamometer. You know, like we had to go through so much uh, work. This engine practically took us three times longer than any other V8 engine to install on the dynamometer. But then again, you know, I wanted to see how it's going to go, how it's going to work. It was pretty impressive. It's an old engine. It was designed way before I was born. So it was something you need to see. So we're going to get it warmed up. We'll make a little test. And I did some testing yesterday, but I realized that it runs lean at full throttle. So I'm going to have to open it up again and look at the jets, see if I can go bigger, if I have jets for this type of carburetor. So we're going to warm it up so you guys can see how it runs for an old 1954 engine that came back to life again. And I also have the original shop manual that my client Joe brought in. Here it is. Shop manual, Dodge, uh, this is 1954. And of course, I looked up the specs. I use this manual to do my jobs. And here we are. We have a 7.1 compression ratio. And of course, the, uh, here it is. Maximum brake horsepower at 4,400 RPM is 150 in the Royale uh, car, of course, right here. And so when you have the Royale, Dodge Royale, it's a 150 horsepower engine at 4,400 RPM. So we're gonna do some dyno testing and see what we're gonna get. Like I said, it's a factory built. We copied exactly what the factory came with. Nothing uh, modified. We just had it on the dynamometer, of course, uh, the way we built it and the way it came from the factory. So let's see what we're gonna get. So let's go get it warmed up, start it, make a test, and we'll take it from there. See, 4245 cubic inch, 3.467, 4250. Okay, this is what we're gonna run it. I gotta make sure the choke does not uh, close on me when I make full throttle tests. So, let me see what I can do with this. You guys want to know an interesting fact? The uh, person, the uh, lady that bought this car brand new back in 54, she's still alive today. She's 99 years old. And she is the one that uh, bought this car brand new with her husband back in 1954. I hope she watches this video and she hears me what I'm saying. And of course, I, I don't know her name, but uh, she's very well that she just sold this uh, engine to this uh, customer of mine. So I uh, hope she sees the video and sees this thing come back to life again. What she's bought back in 54, brand new. And thanks for doing all the oil changes back then. For that reason, the engine's still alive. The only thing is, it just needed a rebuild. Imagine that, eh? You see something come back to life after so many years? Freak out, man, let me tell you and they bought this car brand new. You know, and this is uh, touched me because, uh, you know, I don't know if this uh, lady that uh, bought this car brand new, she'd love to see this thing running. Or she can't come here, of course, she could see it running on our video. And of course, uh, someone tells her about it and uh, we're gonna get it running so she can see it. And here it is, 1954. Mm. 
This is strange, eh? This is a 1954 Red Ram. I've had this engine about a year here in my shop. No rush because the uh, car is not uh, ready yet. It's under restoration. I'm glad that I got this engine running for Joe. So uh, now let's get it warmed up, run it, and uh, see what we can get. Oh my God, this engine is older than I am. Let's get it going. Let's see how it goes. You guys saw that little Picasso paint job I did on the valve covers? Ah, not bad for a beginner. Here we go. fuel ratio. I'm going to lean it out a little bit. It's a bit running rich on idle, so let me just uh, close the air fuel mixture screws. Listen to it, you guys. This is a Hemi humble sound. Listen to it. The humble of a Hemi.
fabricated our own brackets. Perfect. There's no more of them out. So I made my own brackets with Dan. Well, that's what we do, man. I know. And then look at this. I used a Hemi flywheel. Because it's an eight bolt crank. Yeah. It's not threaded a crankshaft. So I put bolts and nuts. I use a smaller flywheel, but the Hemi flywheel, the eight bolts on the flange lined up perfect. And the only problem I had was to space it. So I spaced that out. I also spaced out the uh, starter with the flywheel. And I finally got on the dynamometer. And check this out. Check this out. Check out the high performance exhaust. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to take it at a 2300 RPM to a 5000 RPM at 300 RPMs per second. And here we go. Thank you. I think we're all I think we're all getting older here now. <laughs> Have it there it is wow it's pretty improved there uh, after broken the rigs a couple of times check this out 156. this is a factory rating at 150 horsepower at 4400 rpm we just did a pull look at it we got what 150 at 4400 rpm yeah. exactly that's what the shop manual says maximum horsepower is 4400 rpm we got 156 157. Right. So we're pretty on the, we're pretty right well on, on the money right because on the money. this is all factory. Nick, good job. Man. And then the torque numbers. Well, I think we have to start at an earlier RPM. Nick, you're right on the numbers. I am. The book says so. It's like it does it get better it. than that? No. Oh, look, I like your fabrication. Look, I had yeah. I did, we spent that a lot of creative? time. Yeah. Well done. We had to spend a lot of time on the uh, uh, setting it up on the uh, dynamometer flywheel. We had to make the exhaust system. I don't have header spread. And you know, if we had header spread, it would have proved the horsepower. It but would. Then again, it would. You, the thing is, for a stock engine, stock manifolds, yeah, exactly. everything is the way it was from the factory. Yeah. You're pulling the right numbers. Uh, and course. the engine runs smooth. It does. It's well, like, pressure is great. Beaut. The only thing is the air fuel ratio is running a bit lean. Yeah. But then again, this is all factory. Look, I'm running 13s. Yeah. I like to run high 12s. But then again, I know, think my customer's going to run full throttle. I don't know if I got jets for this carburetor. I don't even know what kind of a carburetor it is. I gotta look at it. Maybe I might return it out. Maybe we could get 160 horsepower out of it. It's possible. So I'm gonna look into it right now. I'm gonna take off the cover and see what we could do. That's so maybe part. we might gain more horsepower if we can return out the carburetor. So you know what? Let's take a look. Sounds good, Nick. Hey, it's a carter. Yeah. It might be the same jets as the Eldobrock. Ed Delbrock. Not Eldobrock, Ed Delbrock. Here we go. Yes. I'm going to take off the cover. But you know, I like to rich in it out and make another test. And by the way, check it out. No oil leaks whatsoever for 1954. Not even in the back. Huh? Is, that, is that something or what, eh? It's something nice, man. Look at that. We're doing a good job here. Let me tell you. Yes, sir. A lot of guests come in. Oh, I see what I'm doing here in the Dynamometer. There's always something cooking here. And this is a unique motor, which we had for quite a while. But I'm glad to have his engine ready and yeah. running. Yes, so sir. now I've got, I've got a few other engines to... Uh, Put on the dynamometer, which are ready. So anyways, I just wanted to get this done and of course go forward with the rest of the motors. And I hope I have the jets for this. One way to find oh, out. Oh yeah. One way to find out. I'm clear on my side. Yeah, let's go on this side now. I'll take out this brace here. Okay. Whatever this is. This is probably a mechanical choke uh, mechanism. Okay. Sure. Okay. 
Just watch you don't burn your jacket or anything there, man. No, I took off. And then again, we don't have headers. Look, this here. No, this way it's stuck in nicely. Hey, you gotta see the wood fold. They're a gigantic cartridge. Right, right here. here. Right here. Yeah. Check that out. <clears throat> and no leaks whatsoever, right? This <coughs> really surprised me. That's bigger than the Mercedes. I'm just out there, got it running. Damn, that's fun. Yeah, you got good eyes, man. No. No, you know? For Tell me what number that is. I got one good eye. How's okay. That? You know, when something has no power, you know what they're going to do to the customer, right? They're going to they're gonna have it full throttle all the time. That's not right. I know. So that's why I want to rich out the secondaries. We're just going to go slightly bigger on the secondaries, and hopefully we get the air fuel ratio we're looking for. Okay, there you go. Man, that was uh, time consuming to replace the two rear jets on this carburetor. We went a few numbers up on it, on the rear jets. Hopefully I get the air fuel ratio numbers I'm looking for. And, uh, and I hope I don't have to remove the cover again. So let's see what happens. Let's go. Let's get it running. Check this out, eh? No harmonic balancer, just a pulley. It's an internal balance engine. It's got no uh, harmonic balancer, just a pulley, which is part of the uh, front crank. But anyways, that's the way it was in 54. And here it is, it's a neutral balanced engine. We've done so many things to this engine, we're still working on it. Okay, let's fire it up. One of my favorite drinks, chocolate milk. Okay, here we go. Yes, sir. Just gonna warm it up. Honey, you're ready too? You got your coffee? I got, I got my chocolate drink. Manny, put the fan on. That's yes, right. On, okay. Okay, Manny, ready. Okay. Uh, where was it? It's right here. I can remember correctly, we're taking it at uh, starting at 2300 and finishing at 5000 RPMs. 
300 RPMs per second. And here we go. All set. That's how it's running. It seems to be running leaner now. Hold it. Right. We've lost power. You know, I'm going to warm up the engine a bit more. Let's see. Where's your fuel ratio? I don't know. Look. Let's check uh, measured power. Raw power. Look, it seems to be running leaner. Something's wrong there. Let's go check. Maybe there's a vacuum leak or something. Or did we forget anything? That's strange. What happened? Wait, we put a bigger number. Yeah. Tell me if it's full throttle. Okay, watch this. Okay, there you go. Hit it? Yeah, no, your secondaries in the back are closed. Okay, then we got an issue with the... We have an issue with the linkage on the carburetor. I must have put something wrong. Go full throttle. Manny, maybe I did something wrong. Look at it. It's open. Now it's closed. It was closed. It's open. It was closed. And it works mechanical, not vacuum. Yeah, it's mechanical. So what happened? Is That's that wide open now? Yeah. Both of them? Was it wide open before? No. Go, go floor it from inside the uh, control room. Hold it there. Are you push, pushing hard? That's, that's pushing. Yeah, it's wide open. It's wide open. You know what? Let's try it again. Let's make a back to back test. Okay, let's try it again. Okay. Let's make another test. It's cutting off. It's cutting off. Something's wrong. I can tell. So I'm making the power it did. You know what? Man, shut the fan. I think we should just. Uh, Put them back? Yeah. God, I don't want to take it apart again. On the second oh. half, it's a pain. It's, uh, it's misfire right now. They did, did not do that before the original oh, test. Oliver, shut the water. Shut the water. Oh, you got to be kidding me. You're going to take apart the carburetor again? Let's put it back to the factory setup and make another test back to back and see if we can get back our 150 horsepower. Then I'll leave it as it is. Okay, let's go. All right, we go back on the drawing board. Take off the top half and put back the original jets and uh, let's see if we get back our 150 HP. Well, we put back the same jets the way it came from the factory. I guess we're gonna leave it like that because we lost about 10 horsepower before. 
So now we're going to do another test with the original jets back in place and uh, on the rear secondary uh, that we've replaced and uh, that's how it goes. Ready? I just have to say. What? That is one sweet sound again. It is, eh? Look at that. that awesome. Look at the idle, 600 RPMs. No, but if you listen to the exhaust, it just cuts it away. It's like We're still down yeah, like 10 horsepower. You, you know what? Let me fix the exhaust leak there, uh, Manny, and we'll do another test. Well, we still have 10 horsepower. Where do we go? We don't know, but we have a major exhaust leak on the pipe on the passenger side, so we're gonna fix that and we'll take it again. Let's go. It's an old piece of pipe that came with the exhaust manifold. All I did was uh, replace the bolts and, uh, you know, it's not exactly a perfect uh, flat mating surface. So uh, I'm going to try to see if I could do something, something with it. something that will adapt. That's right. I'm going to try to see if we can find a gasket and put some more silicone and try it out. Okay, I'm gonna go give this to Manny. Let's see if we can finish this off. We lost 10 horsepower and I want to get it back. So let's go get it. Dad always said use a straight file when you have two mating surfaces just to make sure that you got no corrosion, no dirt, no, no uh, deformities. That way when you go to assemble it, Lines up perfectly, mates nicely, seals forever. So we're gonna use a good old Primatex uh, high temperature silicone. Oh, it's a good idea. Because everything's old on this uh, exhaust pipe and uh, exhaust manifold. So it's warped to uh, unbelievable measures. So if, in this case, I'm gonna use my uh, trusty Permatex. Yeah, my trusty Permatex because this stuff does miracles for me, let me tell you. It doesn't just work on gaskets either, I found uh, out. No, and you know, it does a lot fix of the things. Seat, fix the seat on my truck. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Well, there you go, good stuff, good stuff. <laughs> Thank you.
I'm gonna start the engine at 2,000 RPM and then take it to 5,000. Okay. Actually, we don't even need to take it to 5,000. I'm gonna take it to uh, 49, 2,000 to 49. Okay, I'm ready whenever you are. O2 sensors on, okay? I'm gonna just warm it up a little bit. Like it was missing a little bit, did you notice? Just a little bit. Nick, it could also be that uh, after a few runs we uh, coat the uh, spark plugs. Yeah, I'm gonna look at them now. Okay, let me go, let me put down the RPM, yeah. yeah. Oh, you got it? Water. Yeah. I'm gonna take a look at the spark plugs. Yeah. We're stuck at 141, we're not getting back our 10 horsepower. Okay? It looks good, okay. You know, man, I don't know what happened, but uh, I haven't got back to 10 horsepower. Why? Let's take You know what, did it move? I should check it, eh? Maybe it moved. Let me take a look at it. Let me take a look at it. You know, it's got a very low compression ratio, eh? 7.1. 7.1? 7.1. Did you hear it pinging when I, I gave it a 33 degrees? Maybe I should give it more. I'm just, you know what, I'm gonna advance it two degrees. Maybe the distributor turned out. That was about two degrees, but you know what? Let me put my thumb light on it. Look at the RPM. 680 RPM. What a rumble. Look at this, man. You see it cracking up? Yeah. It's cracking up. I'm gonna put the timing where I had it. I brought it to 26 degrees now. Okay. Ready? Yeah. We'll leave it there. Okay. I'm going to check the spark plugs now. Okay. You can shut the water pump too, Manny. You know, unless some wires keep popping out again like before. I'm gonna take a look at the plug. I know they're gonna be white, I'm sure. We're just gonna take out one. I'm looking to see the color of the spark plug right now. I wanna see if it's running too lean, too rich. And uh, 
Legal. Jeez, it's hot. It's hot. It's hot. It's good, it's not that bad, eh? Clean, very good. Look, I think it's running lean. Eh? You see no black at all, but then you gotta look deep inside. Look at that. Yeah, deep inside. It's no, it's... It's running lean. Yeah, it needs to be... It's running lean. You should have some black on the outside also. No, I'm not worried. But then again, this is all factory. That's right. We have all factory jetting, nothing's blocked, it's all there. I got no exhaust leaks, the time is where it is. I think it is what it is, but uh, we're not building a racing engine here, we're just building a cruiser. But still, I want to smooth it out as much as I can. I want to see my air fuel ratio meter while you're revving it up, Manny. You ready? Let's see. Go ahead. It's a very high 13s when you're loading it up. Something's up with the jet. Let's see. It is, eh? That was working. I'm gonna rev it, we're gonna cover it up, watch. Our first test of the day, when we started fresh, with the same jets we have in right now, it hit 156 HP. Which is good for so you know what, just, just for fun, I'm just gonna leave it alone. I'll make my test on Monday. Cold. Let's see if I get my same numbers back. With the engine cold. With the engine cold, just to see. I'm very surprised. I put back all the same jetting. You're doing the right way. You go back to what you know. And then I'm gonna look into the uh, carpet and see if I can reach it out. Yes. Because I can see from the plug it's running lean. So you know what, I'll stop for today. And somehow we got stuck at 141 horsepower. Yes, a couple times I got 156, 150, 151. But you know what? I tried to gain 10 more today. I couldn't do it. But it's, it is what it is. So there's no happy ending. This is it. And uh, this is the real thing. What do you want me to tell you? I don't have any other carburetors to uh, compare with or try it out. I'm leaving it as it is. And I'll show it to my customer next week. And uh, we'll take it from there. But in the meantime, this is the best I've done. And that's all I can do. And I know this car really needs more fuel. I put more bigger jets. So I have to go deeper in it. Maybe it won't accept the bigger jets because of the uh, tunnels or whatever ports it's going through. Whatever. But anyways, I'm gonna see what my client wants next week. I'll take it from there. But in the meantime, we got an engine running. Everyone's good. We have no leaks, no vibrations whatsoever. Everything's running good. Oil pressure's good. Uh, no ticking noises. And of course, uh, no oil leaks, which really surprised me, which is great. No oil leaks whatsoever. And of course, this is a 1954 engine. And I think we did a great job for the first time doing an engine from the 50s. And you guys, if you look down below the video, we have a whole bunch of merchandise that you guys can buy. 
So whatever you like, buy it, love it, wear it, and enjoy it. And help spread the word of Vic's Garage. And if you have some time, check out our Patreon page. We have extra content and you guys can watch it and take it from there. And we'll see you next time.